landscape is precious, but it has also been and remains the source of the minerals that sustain our everyday lives. There are many small abandoned quarries around the countryside. Modern needs in economics require today's quarries to be on a bigger scale than ever before. With demand worldwide increasing every year, it is imperative and urgent that we take a new look at what we do with our abandoned quarries and consider the future restoration of those that are still in operation. Internationally, there have been notable successes. In Mombasa, in Kenya, close to pristine beaches, Bamburi cement considered how they might utilize a wasteland created by their quarrying. The pressure was no doubt increased by the demands of the local tourist industry, but the results have been astonishing. This is where the story begins, with our insatiable demand for cement. We simply can't do without it. It's the basic building material for most of our industries, our homes, our infrastructure. If we want a modern, well-developed economy, we have to have cement. The key ingredient is limestone, nature's own building block formed from coral reefs millions of years old. Bamburi cement is East Africa's largest producer. Every year, the company crushes enough limestone to make 1.3 million tons of it. And demand is growing. But the rock has to come from somewhere. It is impossible to produce cement without leaving an ugly and apparently sterile scar. Life, in all its forms, all interconnected, separate, yet unable to exist alone. We know this, yet too often we ignore it. At best, we simply forget. Not here though, not at Hala Park. This is an era where we are preoccupied with vanishing species, with life blinking out. But the scientists and staff at Hala Park have done something remarkable. They've taken a barren wasteland and created a place where diversity is blooming. Rather than fight against nature, they've worked with her. They've proved it is possible to create something more extraordinary than either man or nature could have achieved alone. Of course, this is no accident. The man with a vision to do it was René Halla. Three decades ago, one East African cement company offered him a challenge to turn its limestone quarry into an ark for vanishing coastal species. I saw the forest and later on I saw the devastation which was taking place and I, I saw that we have to do, show the people that we can do something again. That we can, all these uh, destroyed landscapes, not only quarries but other areas, we, we can, we can uh, bring them back into something which uh, people can live in harmony with nature again. The Eden Project in Cornwall, England, was an equally ambitious project. It turned these abandoned clay pits into an iconic tropical greenhouse complex where thousands of visitors can experience a wealth of flora and fauna from all around the world without leaving their home country. It is now a prosperous tourist attraction. Yet inspirational though they may be, these ambitious projects sadly cannot be considered patterns that can be widely applied. The approach for most quarries has to be more down to earth. There are those that argue that nature will do the job by itself. After all, it does after natural disasters.
to a degree they are right, particularly in smaller quarries. But if the rock is laid bare, with no topsoil, it may take many generations to recover. And in some countries, we are creating quarries faster than nature can regenerate them. Yet if we look at the quarries themselves, particularly if we imagine them with trees and vegetation, are they so different to natural features that we enjoy and cherish? There are those that already appreciate abandoned quarries. On a fine day, this old limestone quarry near Helwith Bridge in Upper Ribblesdale, like many others, provides a great venue for rock climbers, with a wealth of good roots. Whether these fine rock faces are natural or man-made has little relevance to them. The challenge is the same. At the head of the same valley, near Ribblehead, is another long abandoned quarry. Ribblehead Quarry provided rock for Ribblehead Viaduct when the Settle to Carlisle railway line was under construction. Resting as it does in the heart of the Yorkshire Downs National Park on the northern slopes of Ingleborough, it is in a scenically sensitive area. It is now a nature reserve. The approach here has been modest, but the results can already be seen. A few local trees have been planted in a small area of specially created topsoil. Like Bamburi, the principle has been a case of working with nature rather than against it. It is a case of kick-starting the natural processes and then allowing nature to take over. A small stream trickles from the quarry wall. The water source is natural, but it has been managed to become an important part of the regeneration process. A dam at the outlet of the quarry forms a small lake. The water source encourages not only plant growth, but makes the quarry attractive to birds and wildlife. The development is in its early stages, but it is perhaps an indication how a little intervention at modest cost can give nature a helping hand. But our modern quarries are huge. Can they ever be restored to a useful and an attractive part of the landscape? Plans for the restoration of Coldstone's quarry are already laid out for the future. A quarry such as this already provides an unusual environment to which certain forms of wildlife are attracted. In spite of the noise and machinery, peregrine falcons have nested on the rock faces of the quarry for several years. Care has been taken to disturb them as little as possible. The, the quarry's got a, a working life where, where it's going to be producing aggregates for 15 to 20 years. After that it will be um, restored, we'll be putting material back in the bottom to allow vegetation to grow. We'll possibly create some uh, water bodies in the bottom so it will attract even more wildlife. Uh, then it's likely to get taken over by uh, one of the trusts, one of the natural trusts, nature trusts like the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust. They will run it af after that. The site is going to be a very impressive site. It's impressive now, but when it's completed, it'll be a far larger than this and it'll be a very large, impressive man-made hole. However, for every quarry, there is a different solution. 
The long-term future of all sites in the UK is now an essential part of every quarry's development, and a fixed plan must be followed from the opening of the site to the closure. We must begin to see our abandoned quarries not so much as a problem, but as an opportunity.